Hey guys, Dagger Matt here, and I have a special guest with me here today. Hi, I'm Robert Gibbs from Dagger Matt Military. And um, Robert has a couple of special knives uh, that we just got in today that he wants to go over with you. So you want to tell the uh, audience what we got here today, Bob? Yeah. So this first dagger is an early Krebs dagger, and this dagger is a later RZM dagger made by Tiger. Awesome, Bob. So a couple of nice pieces here. Um, they exhibit really nice cross grain. <clears throat> uh, both blades have a little bit of graying to them, but um, the cross grain is really, really nice. Um, they would clean up exceptionally well. Um, you can really see the cross grain on both blades. So really nice knives. Um, this one, as Bob mentioned, is by Julius Krebs. And maker mark is right there. And Krebs is not a rare maker. He's one of the more common makers. This one over here, like Bob had mentioned, is ours, the MM768, which it was made in 1941, okay? Um, unique part about Tiger Daggers is the 38 ones still had nickel silver fittings even though they were RZM marked. Um, at this point, these are no longer uh, nickel silver. Um, Bob, what type of material do you think those, that those guards are made out of? So, this one right here is made of nickel silver, but this one over here is plated steel. Is it, you think it's steel? Could it be something else? Well, it could be zinc, pot metal. So, if it were plated steel, Bob, it would be magnetic, right? Yeah. So it's not magnetic, right? So that automatically um, excludes the fact that it's steel, right? So we can determine that it's not steel just by the fact that it's not magnetic. But you're right, it could have been plated steel, right? So the fact that it's not magnetic means it could be aluminum, it could be zinc, or as Bob mentioned, it could be just simply pot metal, right? So <clears throat> both these knives, blades are in really good condition, full length blades. Um, they both measure just over eight and a half inches long, which is what you're looking for when you're measuring an SA dagger. Um, but Bob, tell us a little bit more about that Krebs. So. What about this up here, Bob, the pommel? So this pommel has been chewed up, as you can see, compared to this one. It's a bit damaged, so which tells us that it's a parts dagger. Well, not necessarily that it's a parts dagger, but somebody took it apart. Right? Yeah. Somebody took that dagger apart. And typically, this on a pommel nut, okay, this exhibit, exhibition on a pommel nut is indicative of somebody having messed with the dagger, right? So this one is what you want to see nice, clean, never been messed with. This one is what you don't want to see. It looks like an angry badger was nursing on that, right, Bob? Mm -hmm. So um, that's a bad sign right from the get-go. Uh, the other thing that we look at with the dagger is this dagger does not fit into that scabbard. Okay? So this is 100% a parts dagger as Bob had mentioned and we knew that buying it um, but it's okay. So then we turn these over and you can see <clears throat> this eagle is the aluminum variation of uh, the eagle. Okay. It's what you'd typically see in a later RZM. Look at the grain on that though. The green on that uh, grip is beautiful. But anyway, um, that's an aluminum eagle uh, as you would typically see in a later one. This eagle is nickel silver, but if you look at the fit of that eagle, it ain't so hot, okay? So here's another <clears throat> early grip with an inset nickel silver eagle. That's what you wanna see, okay? Nicely set in there, this one is not what you want to see. So this, as Bob had mentioned, is a part stagger, right Robert? Yep. So not what we're looking for when we're buying SAs, but I did buy this as a nice parts. I got it A, super cheap, B, this blade is absolutely gorgeous, C, these guards are quite valuable, and so is the scabbard despite its condition. So um, both of these exhibit on the blade uh, for Deutschland, everything for Germany, um, but when we put this guy into its sheath, it fits perfectly, okay? So that's the fit that you wanna see. The grip to the scabbard, very nice fit on that tiger, okay? And nice tiger striping too, how about that? Um, but this one doesn't fit in there, sadly. 
so I'm not going to try to put it back in there. So um, this is a parts dagger. The scabbard is a decent scabbard. The blade's a beautiful blade. The upper and lower guard both fit very well. Um, both are, are, are in nice condition. I shouldn't say fit well. They don't fit well, but they're in nice condition. The pommel obviously needs some love and attention, and this grip has been has seen better days. So, a um, couple of new SA daggers that we got in here at Dagger Mat Military, right, Robert? Mm -hmm. And uh, so tomorrow arriving, we have a vending. SA, which is a very, very rare mint SA, which is going into my personal collection. We have a mint ground roam icorn, which we're going to do a video on. We have an SS dagger, and we have a rare Spitzer uh, Luftwaffe dagger coming in. So um, as those daggers come in, me and Robert will do a couple of more videos and try to give you guys some more information, keep you guys learning on what to look for when you're buying these uh, rare and expensive German daggers. As always, we appreciate you guys watching the uh, video. Thank you for hitting that subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you next time. From Dagger Matt and Robert Gibbs, thanks for watching.